to pay my issue to him on him, Mission Nepoan Kaninge, Apwe Piayane. My name's Jesse, it's good to be here today, and I'm happy to be back at Miami University. Hiya, Tracy Wings Rani, Mission Ewe. Um, Tracy, and I'm glad to be here. I appreciate being invited. And uh, we took up the challenge that Jal set before us um, to explore the possibilities, basically, um, looking at Mandupoe as a knowledge values based system and how it connects to Montessori as one connection. Biting time here, killing time. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, we've divided the, the talk into two parts. One, to look at uh, the components of Montessori and how we think they might fit, and then those opportunities for language and culture within that. So. All right, so let's begin to take a moment and read this quote and think about what kind of environment you learn best in. Education is a natural process carried out by the human individual and is acquired by listening to words but by experience in the environment. I'm a hands-on learner myself and often learn best in an environment where I can experience things at my own pace. So after I read this quote, I was looking back on my Montessori training and often think about the learning environment we were provided during this training. I was often in a classroom, three to six primary classroom, on the floor, touching all the materials given to us. I was not in a desk, at a table, listening to a lecture, and I was just able to touch everything and explore it as my future kids would. So this slide shows an overview of language programs that are currently in place. A1 Zapatas starts and serves youth ages 10 to 16 during the summer. Miami University tribal students attend a series of language and culture classes throughout their college duration. And community language programs are held in various states throughout the year and open to all ages. Take a minute to notice that there's a gap from ages 0 to 10 and where there is a language program lacking, and we'll revisit this later in the presentation. Okay. All right, so this is Mondepoye. It's the structure that supports our educational work. This visual image is used to portray the educational values of A1 Zapata and other language programs. Starting on the far right is Nepoa Kayangwe. This means we are knowledgeable with an emphasis on how we gain that knowledge. Next is Ayakwa Misiyangwe, meaning we strive to achieve and that all learning requires effort. Next is Ewendiyangwe, which translates as we are related to each other and also refers to how we treat each other. Akoke Lindiyangwe, right here, translates as we care for each other, which facilitates a strong sense of community. Next is Newe Yangwe, right there, and it means to speak well and especially speak well of each other. Last over here is Pekanako Siyangwe, translates as we are generous and we must treat each other with generosity. Now there are two cross poles here and here. The bottom one is Papilwe Yangwe, and it translates as we are humorous and a sense of humor is definitely important through all these times of learning and developing different programs. Next is Akwa Pa Wayangwe. It means we dream, and our dreams are being carried out by our youth and community through the various language programs we hold currently. Both of these cross poles are related to our future and the bumps in the road as we strive to achieve those dreams. So the land is where our roots are. The children must be taught to feel and live in harmony with the earth. This is one of my favorite quotes by Dr. Maria Montessori. I feel that it directly connects to our educational efforts by the direct interactions we have with the environment during A1 Zapata. 
Oftentimes we're going on hikes, we're looking at the sky, the land, animals, plant interactions, everything about the environment that is natural. And I feel like this de definitely ties into that. So by a show of hands, how many of you have heard of Maria Montessori? All right, good. <laughs> All right, so the Montessori method was established by Dr. Maria Montessori, who began her career as an Italian physician and later became an educator. The first Montessori school was established in 1907. Today, there are more than 22,000 Montessori schools in 110 countries across the world. So what is it? Maria Montessori developed this educational model with the main objective to follow the individual child. A large component of this educational framework is to foster independence of the individual child and the importance of the role of the teacher. A teacher's role is to create and maintain the preparing environment directly to support the needs of that child. So here are a couple examples of how Montessori environment fosters independence. On the far left, you have a student cutting a carrot. So it requires a multiple step process. First, they retrieve the carrot, they wash it, they peel it, then they cut it, and then they can choose to eat it or prepare it for their friends in the classroom to eat as a snack. And then they have the cleanup process. So it's a, it takes them about 20 minutes to do this. And so the next picture in the middle is beet grating. A couple weeks ago we did egg dyeing for Easter and we not only just gave them the dye to dye their eggs, we had them create the dye to make their eggs. So they grated beets and they put them in a jar and we let them soak overnight and we boiled it and then they put their eggs in it and so they had a first-hand experience of how you dye an egg, how it works, not just getting the coloring from someone and just putting the egg in it. So, um, The next, the last slide picture is a child doing nail care. So first they get a file and they file their nails. Then they wash their fingers in the bowl of water. Then they dry their hands, they buffer them, and they put lotion on. And then they clean it up and make it ready for the next person. And believe it or not, mostly boys choose this work. <laughs> so. All right, so this is a quote. There is a great sense of community within the Montessori classroom, where children of differing ages work together in an atmosphere of cooperation rather than competitiveness. There is respect for the environment and for the individuals within it, which comes through experience of freedom within community. And now I'm gonna transfer it over to Tracy. Thanks. So, we batted these ideas back and forth, all of what she's presented, and then looked at how this would work for a young children's program. We kind of did a pilot trial run last summer, but not to the detail we're thinking of for the future. We're thinking in terms of young kids having that opportunity to start um, being connected to that older kids camp, but at a younger age, and thinking in terms of how it begins to form their identity. Um, Haley and, and Susan, uh, early this morning talked about the opportunities for identity formation by these um, interactions and what this would provide was that feeling at a much younger age. Um, Haley mentioned that she was in fourth grade before she began to feel a connection to this and that, that seems a little late and what we'd want to do is start to introduce them to uh, a feeling like this, an introductory or maybe a camp light type situation where they're beginning to explore and preview what's coming for them in the future. The way we looked at it was, what were we thinking of for the camp and what are the tenants of Montessori? And if you see what we have here is just an example from um, things that happen in, in a daily life, the kind of things that overlap, they're almost identical in what we were hoping for the camp and some of the ideas that Jesse mentioned um, as Montessori tenants. The 
idea that we we want the children to be experiential rather than sitting at desks. The idea that we want them to think in terms of respect for other people, think in terms of the community. These are just strong overlaps between the daycare ideas and how Montessori goes about it. So the role that Montessori plays for us is kind of a framework or an educational approach that will help us shape some of those uh, ideas and lessons in the classroom. But we already have the, the knowledge framework that we want to communicate. What I want to add to that is how we can um, look at those in terms of language and cultural learning opportunities. So also this morning, Joshua mentioned the idea of creating a space, creating cultural opportunities. And that's a lot of what we're trying to shape within this, is how can we infuse within what we see as those, those knowledge bases and that nice match to Montessori opportunities for uh, language learning and, and cultural space and, and exploration. So I want to share uh, four ways we're thinking our possibilities. This is all still exploratory, as we said, so um, feel free to come talk to us and make suggestions. At the big picture level is looking at the summer theme. So I'm sure all of you know that the summer camp explorations uh, cover different themes every summer. And we would like the children, Young Children's Day Camp to explore those same themes so that they are getting that precursor, but if they have older siblings or friends who are in those, uh, the older kids they want off at a camp, they will have similar topics to talk about. They won't have it at the same depth, will make them more age appropriate, but they'll have that same opportunity to talk about uh, concepts or did you play this game or um, what did you learn today and you know bring that sense of camaraderie with their older siblings, again, rather than having to wait till they're much older. More on the daily routine level, um, this is also something Joshua mentioned in terms of having things that are, are ritualized but also that, that cultural space, just the greetings in the morning um, when everybody comes to school, just a simple aya and knowing that that's part of it and even uh, later adding that introduction that he also added. Young kids can do that. It's a little simpler. Hi, I'm five. But that's okay. It's still an introduction of themselves and who they are at that age. If we can... Uh, create a sense of being able to do that in the language, all the better. Another way that language and culture can come in are the things that happen in the classroom, the informal chit chat, as well as the, the strong uh, regular classroom language that goes on. But they're a little less predictable than the rituals, but there's still things that go on every day. Encouragement from teachers, um, let's try again, that's OK. Those kinds of things are language opportunities, whether the children use them or not is different. This is the opportunity to hear the language, have it around them, and begin to have those warm feelings that come with it. And then beyond that, those are more predictable things. There's just things that happen in the classroom that, that parents or teachers and children have to talk about. Teachers have to make requests or in some cases commands. Please don't do that. But also the kids responding when the, the teacher asks them something. So simple yeses and nos can become part of that. So rather than being in English, they can be in Miami. So these are ways that we can start to introduce language and cultural components. And we're well aware that our teachers are not going to be fluent speakers. That's OK. We can work with that. And what we want to do is develop within that framework ways that they can uh, begin to introduce these, these concepts and these language. We know it's going to take a lot of uh, preparation and work. But people have done this before. I think many of you are familiar with Leanne Hinton's work. And one of the pieces we're looking at is um, teaching when teachers aren't fluent. And she's got a lot of suggestions in there. And she's written a lot of uh, books that, that cover the field, including one that Jesse has a nice chapter in. So uh, the exploration, we found a good match. We were, we were happy with what we were looking at in terms of what we viewed as the principles for the daycare and happy with how Montessori went about sharing those. So we think this is going to be a good way to go forward and try to develop the, the daycare junior camp type scenario for the kids within that Montessori framework. So I'll leave you with this last quote that we, we're looking at the goals and values of Sakajue to, to blend well. And the quote is that education cannot be effective unless it helps a child to um, open up himself 
to life. It was written long ago, so it should be himself, herself, but the opening up to life is what we're really hoping to provide that opportunity with in the camp so that these children can begin picking up those th threads at a much younger age than children have had in the past. So Newe, and please do come talk to us either at the back or send us email questions. And I kind of slipped that in. I'm not sure she knows that, but that is. <laughs> And these are a couple of references we've uh, mentioned today. So, anyway, and thank you very much.